Today I'm here at Tampa Ship. We're gonna take a look at a couple of OSVs. One in particular that is Ice Class. It's probably unique in that it is uh, true Lloyd's Ice Class and cut through a meter of ice. And the other one is 220 feet. And we'll go all through that. We'll do a technical tour. There are currently 400 people working in this shipyard here in Tampa. And we're gonna have a ride around with uh, Chuck Lavert and see what's going on here today. Here is the Sea Courageous that we're gonna go aboard in a minute. It is stored here in Tampa. And here are the basic specs. It's 220 feet long, but it's got a 56 foot beam. So it's very wide bodied. Uh, they regularly stretch these boats up to 280 feet by putting a plug in the aft deck. And you'll notice that on these boats that the deck houses uh, are pretty much all the same regardless of the length. It's US built to ABS classification, as you can see here. These boats are laid up in a secure area. Uh, they are put away with everything aboard as if they were uh, going back into service. As I mentioned, the deck house, the uh, superstructure on the bow of the boat is pretty much the same on these vessels, regardless of the lengths, say between Basically. 200 most 200 of them, and 280. most of the Schwest boats, actually, if you compare them to a lot of the other Louisiana supply boats or internationally even supply boats, the Schwest boats will have an extra deck level. So there's an extra, you know, mid deck and uh, gives the boat extra, usually additional accommodations. So from, from the existing superstructure building aft, and you can add directly aft of the existing superstructure, accommodations, salon areas. Uh, then after that would be, uh, you know, structure with a garage, heli uh, helipad on top of the garage, and still with plenty of deck space for all your toys, you know. Underneath you'll have um, uh, pressure tanks, bulk tanks, yeah. midship, and then aft, mud tanks. So they're uh, uh, on the project that we're doing now with Boris, yeah. the, uh, the bulk tanks have all been removed, which leaves a wide open, clean slate to do with what you will. And then the mud tanks aft are square. Right. Usually with a passageway, you'll see in a little while, either in the middle or on the sides. And those square tanks, oftentimes you just cut them open and then you, you can make uh, storage rooms, work rooms, dive, you know, dive lockers, so forth. Uh, but even if you have to cut those uh, bulkheads and create larger rooms, see all of these, uh, uh, these uh, uh, pipe structure, the racks on the side of the boat, they removed all of that, cut down uh, to the uh, bulwarks. Uh, if you look on the side of, for example, the boat behind us there, you see all the rub rail, they cut all that back and made the hull more fair. Um, they, they went into the hull of the boat and removed all of the bulk tanks that we talked about. And if, you, if you look on the plans, those are the round ones. Yeah. So they just cut those out and remove them. And uh, cut a hole in the deck somewhere, pull it out. And uh, removed all the deck boards. And on, on a Schwest boat, under these deck boards, there's a, uh, a, a, a layer of corrosion protection. Yep. Really, it's, it's, it's almost like tar. And it protects the, the steel below the wood from corrosion. And I can tell you on the Ryan, uh, when we pulled up the deck boards and removed the corrosion protection, the steel was like new. And this is all high load bearing deck. This is high load bearing. So the additional structure that we will do for the conversion is going to sit right on here and it doesn't need any more steel work. Sit right on here. Any, uh, right. Additional. And the additional weight of the additional structure won't approach the limits of the vessel right. by any means, not even close. You know, the rest of the hull structure on this boat originally protected before paint uh, was primed with uh, zinc chromate. So that's, that's something that most boat yards don't do. So now we are walking uh, forward on the main deck and we're going into a crew area. Um, crew lounge off to starboard and that opens up to the crew dining. Drinks area, here is the full galley. It's a commercial galley. And there is a uh, series of uh, walk-in cold stores here 
refrigeration in the first section here and then uh, behind these racks through the next door goes into the freezer, walk-in freezer storage area. And there's a couple of staterooms here with a couple of bunks there. Looks like there's maybe four in there. So now we're gonna go down a deck and forward into the bow section. So if you go forward, uh, there's going to be thruster. We've got a cat engine here, right? Yeah. We're all the way forward. So this is the bow thruster. So you can see the shaft here. And you see forward, it's a drop down thruster. So now we are heading aft through the uh, central passageway here between the tanks headed towards the engine room. Majority of the pipes and the pumps that you see in this passageway will be removed when the tanks are removed. So you don't need it. Some of it's fuel transfer. So if you need fuel transfer, but uh, yeah, the majority of the equipment, transfer pumps and so forth that you see, you won't need. We pass through this watertight door into the cavernous engine room, which also houses the generators. So we're starting to get into machinery here, yeah. right? So you got generators, probably, I think there's three. Everything's cat. Everything's cat. So three generators and your two mains. And unlike on many yachts in the engine room, You've got plenty of room here to work on the Unlike, engines. There's probably uh, yeah. six feet yeah. above you your head there. Yeah. So for reference, we're looking at uh, two CAT 3516s, 3200 horsepower, uh, and three 300 kilowatt uh, gensets plus the emergency genset, which is not right here. We well, have a shaft yeah. running aft, and in this case, it, it goes up because it connects to the thrusters, right? Yeah. On top of the thruster. So you'll have a shaft run going up, and then we'll get into the thruster run. Yeah, so you can open one of those, you see right here? Open this if you want. Well, that's just a, a, basically a U-joint. Rolls-Royce. So the Azipod thrusters are made by Rolls-Royce and there is an aft uh, steering control station here in case the bridge loses control. It's a backup system with a compass. There was a time whether or not we still rank <laughs> number one, but we, we're the largest customer. We buy more cat marine diesels than anybody else in the world. Have purchased more marine cat. So this will be an accommodations deck. With most conversion designs, this accommodation deck, which would be one deck up from the main deck, stays as a crew quarters. And the uh, guest accommodations are built going aft of this deck. And that, so they would also be one deck up. Now we're going a deck higher where the captain has his quarters and the chief mate. You see, this is an extra deck. Okay. Most supply boats, this is if you look at the uh, design profile on the top, you'll see that the bridge is the uh, darkened windows there on the second deck up. And this vessel, you'll see that that is where this extra accommodation deck is and that the bridge is actually one deck higher. And so now we're going to go up uh, to the bridge deck. This is the wheelhouse. Yeah, so when you're in operations loading and unloading at the rig, you're operating from this station and you have full clear view of the back deck. Right. So this this is Marine Technologies Dynamic Positioning. That's our company. Paper charts. 
Yeah. I love it. These vessels have every uh, necessary piece of electronic and navigation equipment and almost all of the systems I would say have redundancy. Um, they can certainly be upgraded and updated but uh, they are ready to go to sea uh, anywhere on the globe. There's a view of the bow from the bridge there. And the entire starboard wall here is essentially uh, operating manuals and ship manuals. So that concludes our brief walkthrough technical tour of a 220 foot OSV, 56 foot beam. So this hull can be extended to 240, 260, 280, and many of them have been. So uh, please get in touch if you'd like more information and you'd like to discuss doing a conversion on an OSV into a global expedition yacht.